Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you a 2013 CFL season preview. We're taking a look at the Hamilton Tiger Cats. We're going to break down their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams to see what we can expect from the Tiger Cats this season. But first, let's go back to the 2013 CFL draft to see how well they did this past May. Now here are the draft selections for the Tiger Cats. And again, very good draft class. I know I say that for every team, but this was a very good class in the CIS. Lennon Gaydosh, in my opinion, the best defensive lineman in the draft. They were able to get him number one overall. Simon Le Marquand will probably make the roster as a very good receiver. Neil King, underrated defensive back they got out of St. Mary. So overall, very good class, top to bottom. The key pick for the Tiger Cats is not Lyndon Gaydosh. We know he's going to be an outstanding talent, but when you look at the defensive back, Mike Daly out of McMaster, this guy had 10 career interceptions for the Marauders. Also was a two-time All-Star as well as a second-team All-Canadian pick last year. The question I have about the tie cast draft is I felt as though they should have added another running back. Give themselves a premier guy in the backfield that can help bolster that offense because we know they went heavy defense and I understand that you have to address your weaknesses, but adding a running back would have been key in my opinion for the tie cats. I'm giving Hamilton a B-plus for their draft. They came in on a mission. They want to get better defensively. They got Lyndon Gaydosh. They got two outstanding defensive back prospects, and they were able to build depth as well along the linebacking core. So overall, they did a very solid job. I felt as though they could have added a running back. That's the only reason why I would knock this draft. But overall, like I said before, very solid draft coming from the Ticats. The 14-year vet Henry Burris had a sensational season last year throwing the football. Burris threw for over 5,000 yards and 43 touchdowns. But the only knock about his game would be the 11 fumbles. He had 13 of them in 2011, and he come at the most crucial times during a ball game. He has to clean it up in order to get the tie Cats to where they want to go. There's a good battle going on at the backup quarterback spot for the title quarterback of the future the two guys in my opinion that stand out the most are jeremiah masoli you remember him from oregon and Ole miss and dan lafever from central michigan both guys possess the athleticism that you want at the quarterback position in the cfl and both can throw well on the run but don't forget about brian brahm as well you remember him with the green bay packers and the buffalo bills he started at louisville in my opinion this is a tough battle for all three quarterbacks i wish they can keep four but somebody will not make the cup. I think all three guys have a legit chance to win that number two job. As a backup to Avon Colborne, Siobhan Walker was the second leading rusher last year with 656 yards and four touchdowns. He now enters the 2013 season as the starter replacing Colborne, and he can definitely carry the load. This guy has a blazing speed that can go from a two-yard gain to a 95-yard touchdown run in an instant. But the Ticats offense relies on the running back by committee approach, which means they're going to have to find a number two running back. And when you look at C.J. Gable, the six-year vet, Daryl Stevenson and rookie Bo Palmer, 5'9", 190, out of Simon Frazier. Those three guys will compete for that backup duty, and they're going to get a lot of carries. Over 100 carries will the number two back get. They're going to have to run the ball a little bit more to help out that defense. And I know Walker can carry the football over 200 times, but the way they use their backs, they're going to need one of those guys to step up. And my money is on C.J. Gabe. I like what he brought to the table at USC. This guy can definitely catch the football out of the backfield, and he gives you that make-you-miss ability that you want out of the running back position. The Chris Williams situation aside, the Ticats still have a very talented core of receivers. Bringing in Andy Fantuz last season was a big reason why Hamilton had one of the best passing games in the league. Fantuz hauled in 72 receptions for close to 1,000 yards. They also have the 11-year vet Dave Stoller, who's one of the more dependable wide receivers in the CFL. And everyone will have to move up a slot on a depth chart this year, so you'll see everyone's receptions and yards improve and i'm excited to see what third year guy bakari grant will do with more playing time grant is more explosive than both fantus and stala and is also looking to improve on his 475 yard and five touchdown 2012 season they have two young guys that i think will also have a huge and significant contribution simon charbonneau campo who's 6'4, 195 pounds in his second year out of sheerbrook and the 2013 fourth round draft pick simon lee marquand 
out of Ottawa. This guy had 88 receptions, 1,300 yards, and eight touchdowns in his Ottawa career. I think both guys will have a huge impact and show their worth this season. And don't forget about Samuel Jagari, who's also a very good returner, as well as Andre Jones. Those guys will also provide some solid depth at the slot back position. The Ticats returned all five starters on that offensive line that paved the way for an offense that was first in the CFL in passing and had a very good running game. Peter Dyakowski is one of the best interior linemen in the league. He missed the last five games in 2012, but was still named an Eastern Division All-Star. I was also impressed by guard Pascal Belligerin, 2011 third-round selection, who was in his first CFL season last year, did a fine job. And left tackle Brian Simmons did a fabulous job last season, starting all 18 games at the most important position along that offensive line outside of the center position. And he has been an integral part of the success since signing with the Tiger Cats a couple of seasons ago. Hamilton had one of the worst defensive lines statistically in the CFL last season. The main focus and priority number one was to make sure that doesn't happen again. Now the Ticats made a big splash in free agency by signing former number one overall selection Shamari Williams. Williams is starting to come into his own as a pass rusher. His best football is ahead of him in my opinion. The Ticats also drafted one of the best and most versatile defensive linemen in the country with the University of Calgary's Lyndon Gaydosh. Those two will instantly upgrade the defensive line. The only problem is that Gaydosh decided to take a shot with the Carolina Panthers in the NFL. Now, there's still a chance he'll play for the Ticats this season, but that's a huge blow to their draft plans and their plans moving forward for their defensive line. Elsewhere along the defensive front, you look at both Greg Peach, who had six sacks, and Brandon Boudreaux, who had five. Both guys were in a rotation last year and showed great promise as pass rushers. Also keep an eye on Hassan Hazim, who came over in a trade from Edmonton. Remember, pass rushing wasn't necessarily an issue. They have to get better at stopping the run, and then everything else will fall into place. So this defensive line definitely has to step up this year. This is a very solid group of linebackers for Hamilton. Nine-year vet Jamal Johnson, who had 75 tackles last year and three sacks, and eight-year vet Markeith Knowlton. Seems like he's always been there for at least 20 years, who battled some nagging injuries last season, but still chipped in 34 tackles. They'll add free agent linebacker Marcellus Bowman, who spent his first three seasons with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, where he totaled 153 tackles and nine sacks. At 6'3", 230 pounds, Bowman is the perfect combo of a run stuffer that has the athleticism to roam sideline to sideline and drop back in the coverage. They do lose the talented linebacker Ray Williams, but will look to Bowman and a slew of young guys to fill that void. Also keep an eye on Simone Lawrence and Nate Busses. I think both guys can not only help on special teams, but also in their defensive sub packages. If you thought the defensive line struggled last season, then the secondary was also a catastrophe. As with the run defense, the pass defense was either last or next to last in many categories. The Ticats went out and signed free agent defensive back Evan McCullough, who spent three productive seasons in Toronto. And I'm a big fan of D-Webb, who last year had 64 tackles and two interceptions. You should also see better play from Ricardo Coakley, who's entering his second year of CFL-level ball. Now, health is very important to this unit's success. Last year, they were banged up. They dealt with some injuries, and that could have contributed to what happened last year statistically. Keep an eye on ball-hawking rookies. Neil King and Mike Daly, both guys I think should have a huge impact on this secondary. Kicker Luka Kanji enjoyed his best season as a pro last year, earning himself an Eastern Division All-Star nod. Kanji connected on 40 or 45 field goal attempts last year with a long of 48 yards. Now that Chris Williams is currently out of the picture, the Ticats have to replace their leading kickoff returner, but there's no worry. There's a bevy of guys ready to step up and fill that void, including Andre Jones and Samuel Jagari. Both guys excelled in that role last season, so I see no problems with the Ticats on special teams. The road to the Grey Cup for the Ticats goes like this. Number one, they have to have a total defensive improvement over last season. I'm willing to call last year a mulligan. Toss it out the window, but they have to get better than dead last defensively. And number two, the offense has to help out that defense, which means they can't have those costly turnovers, the interceptions, the fumbles, 
in the red zone. They have to put the ball in the end zone and help that defense out with a big lead. And finally, they have to be able to win on the road. Last year, they were five and four at home, one and eight on the road. If they were able to win two road games, they probably would have made the playoffs. So winning on the road is key. You don't have to be nine and zero. Oh, you just have to not be one and eight. So those are my keys to success for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. I had the Tiger Cats finishing fourth in the East Division, and this is not a knock on their upcoming season. This is just a testament to how tough that East Division will be this year, in my opinion. A lot of teams have gotten better. Even the Tiger Cats have made the necessary improvements to ensure their defense won't stink like it did last year. The big key will be Lyndon Gadosh. If he finds his way on the field for the Tiger Cats this season, they could easily find themselves in the playoffs. Remember, they barely missed the playoffs last year. They just have to win on the road. So again, very talented offense, got to get better defensively. They don't have to be the best defense. They just have to make sure they improved on what they did last season. I also want to give a huge shout out to Ticats Fan Forms for always showing football game plan support.